Hello to all the Marvel fans in China. I'm Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios. 2020 has been an unusual year for all of us, but together we've kept hope alive in the face of unprecedented challenges, and we've never stopped telling the tales of heroes. Next year, Marvel Studios will continue to bring inspiring stories to the big screen, including Black Widow, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, as well as Eternals, welcoming a brand new era in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Before that, there will also be a Marvel-themed musical performance to welcome the new year. Tune in to the Billy Billy New Year's Gala on December 31st and get a glimpse of what's to come in 2021. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Marvel Phase 4 video. Kevin Feige hyping up their big New Year's celebration and some trailers that they're going to be dropping on New Year's Eve. There's also a bunch of big new Spider-Man 3 stuff happening that I'll talk about during the video, too. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. Of course, I'll be doing Easter egg videos for anything that they wind up releasing. If you have no idea what's going on, though, Kevin Feige just announced on China's major social networking sites through their Marvel accounts that Marvel is doing a special New Year's Eve celebration with Marvel-themed musical performances. And as part of that, they're running Marvel Phase 4 trailers for the movies and their upcoming projects. Like he says, he hypes up mostly the movies. I say they'd also include new footage for the Disney Plus projects like Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Hawkeye episodes maybe. But here's the thing, China does not have Disney Plus and they're probably not going to get it anytime soon. There's some countries around the world where Disney has to operate through other companies inside those countries just because of weird trade business rules. Really good example of that is a country like India. They get all the Disney Plus shows just like everyone else, like Star Wars The Mandalorian, all the Marvel stuff that's coming up, but Disney releases it through another streaming company that they bought inside that country called Hostar. So that's probably why, as part of this big China Billy Billy Festival for New Year's Eve, Kevin Feige is mostly hyping up the Marvel Phase 4 movies. Black Widow being the first one, that's still coming out in May. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I've actually been pronouncing it Shang-Chi. Maybe Shang-Chi is the more correct pronunciation of that movie. If we're talking about 2021, that's coming out this summer, even though technically there are a couple days left in 2020 as of me posting this video. And then obviously Marvel Eternals movie coming out in November. And obviously there's a pretty big Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man 3, coming out in December. But being that this is an Asian festival in an Asian country, Marvel is making its first Asian martial arts themed movie, there's a pretty solid chance that at this event we'll get our first actual look at the Shang-Chi footage. I've already done a couple videos for the Shang-Chi footage we have seen so far in the larger Iron Man Easter eggs going into Marvel Phase 4. They were filming the movie when the virus first hit way back in March, even though that seems like a lifetime ago now. One of the cooler Iron Man connections is obviously the real Mandarin of the MCU and a sort of continuation of that teaser from the Iron Man 3 one-shot All Hail the King in the Seagate Prison with Trevor and Justin Hammer. A couple of the new Marvel Phase 4 Disney Plus shows that they announced at the Disney Investor Meeting are Iron Man themed shows like Armor Wars with War Machine. So I know a lot of you are also hoping for Justin Hammer to come back for that. But this is the actor who's playing the actual real MCU Mandarin. For those of you that aren't super familiar with the Shang-Chi character or maybe didn't read the classic comics, I think I've mentioned this in a couple of my previous videos, but when they created the character in the 1970s, it was part of this big pop culture kung fu craze and Bruce Lee was blowing up with his movies at the time, so Marvel obviously wanted to get in on that. So they made themselves a version of Bruce Lee in the Marvel Universe and called him Shang-Chi. Bringing things full circle now, the Shang-Chi movie is actually doing basically the tournament arc of Enter the Dragon. So it's like Marvel's remake of Enter the Dragon, except this time there's an actual dragon in the movie. In the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, Marvel is just combining some of the bigger Asian-themed characters and Easter eggs from different Iron Man titles, and we get a very big Marvel dragon from the classic comics. The funny thing about Fing Fang Foon, though, is that he's not an actual dragon in the traditional sense like a Game of Thrones dragon or a wyvern. He's actually an alien that just looks like a dragon. His race are called the Maculans. The other big Iron Man Easter egg for his character is that his race are the ones that created the Mandarin's Ten Rings of Power. The Mandarin obtained them thousands of years ago, at least in the comics, when he stumbled upon their spaceship which had crashed in the mountains where he lived. Kevin Feige also implied that they might be showing off some footage for the Eternals movie that could just be the same footage that they showed off back at Brazil Comic Con CCXP in December last year. That's how long it's been. I did a video for that footage a long, long time ago, so I'll put a link for that in the description. 
For those of you asking why we don't see Kit Harrington's Black Knight character in any of the newer Eternals previews and teasers that they've been releasing, that's just because they don't want to confuse people about what's going on with the characters. The Black Knight's real name is Dane Whitman. His family descends from the original Black Knight of the King Arthur mythology. Kit Harrington's character is just the latest member of their family who inherits the title when he inherits the Ebony Blade. That's really what's passed down in their family with the title, their ancestral sword that's cursed but also gives him crazy power. The sword gives him a lot of Stormbreaker level powers and abilities, like as long as he's touching any part of the blade, he can't be killed no matter how much damage he soaks, and the blade allows him to teleport. He's also got some crazy black armor that they referenced during Spider-Man Far From Home. When they go into the Tower of London to hide from the Iron Man Stark Tech drones, they're running through the museum exhibit. One of the suits of armor belonged to the Black Knight's ancestor. So he's not an Eternal like the other characters or a Deviant. There were a lot of Marvel Phase 4 movie teasers and Easter eggs in that movie. The biggest one aside from Spider-Man 3 and obviously this new Eternals preview is probably the new version of Fantastic Four in that ending scene right before the post credits. Because obviously now we know that John Watts, the director of all the MCU Spider-Man films and now Spider-Man 3, will be the new director of the MCU Fantastic Four movies. I know everyone's got all kinds of questions and theories about what's going on with MCU Fantastic Four. I will do a video for the teaser that they released for that pretty soon because now we actually know a little bit about what's going on with the movie and there are some other Fantastic Four Easter eggs in the new Marvel Phase 4 projects like the Loki series. All those Loki episodes are going to start dropping in May so we won't have to wait that long to actually find out what this new version of Fantastic Four is going to look like. But looking forward to Avengers 5, the other really cool thing about the new Avengers roster is that when they eventually get to that movie, sort of bringing this back around to Eternals, is that Kevin Feige implied Kit Harington was going to join the team. He did this interview after they announced Kit Harington was joining the Marvel movies that was right after Game of Thrones season 8 finale and everyone was wondering what Kit Harington was going to do next after spending 10 plus years of his life on that show. This is what Kevin Feige said about his character beyond the Eternals movie in future Marvel movies. He's a really amazing actor, and this part came up uh, in the Eternals film that we're doing. We were so happy when he agreed to join, and it is a part that could perhaps grow into something else in the future. The something more he's referencing is obviously the Black Knight and Cersei of the Eternals eventually joining the Avengers in the comics, because they did become full-blown Avengers for a while. Also kind of funny that his romantic interest in the Eternals movie is also named Cersei after doing Game of Thrones with Lena Headey's Cersei Lannister. I'm sure when they start releasing those Marvel Eternals trailers, the memes are going to be off the charts. Next time I see you, you'll be dressed all in black. And so he was. Richard Madden is playing Icarus in the movie. He's one of the main characters. It's an ensemble film with a bunch of characters, but he's one of the more major characters. Then of course, there's all the Spider-Man 3. Sony promised some sort of Spider-Man 3 teaser before the end of 2020 and we're closing down. Like as I'm posting this video, we only got a couple days left in the year. Thankfully, only a couple days left. We'll be able to say goodbye to this crap year we've been having pretty soon. I don't know if Sony still plans on releasing any kind of Spider-Man 3 footage. It was a Sony producer working on the Spider-Man movies who said that earlier this year, but it was a while ago. And the reason why you didn't see Spider-Man 3 during the big Marvel Phase 4 panel is mostly because that was Disney hyping up Disney Plus and all their streaming stuff. And when it comes to all the live action Spider-Man stuff with Tom Holland like Spider-Man 3, Sony usually handles a lot of the marketing plans on that. So they decide when they release the trailers, not Marvel. There are so many rumors about multiverse, Spider-Verse Easter eggs going on in Spider-Man 3, alternate Spider-Man versions. You all know about the Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire stuff. Right now, the report is that they're still trying to close Tobey Maguire's contract. And once that deal is in place, then they'll start promoting the movie more and releasing teasers. The other new latest rumor about alternate versions of Spider-Man is Leonardo DiCaprio. And if it sounds weird that he cameo is an alternate universe version of Spider-Man, if you don't remember way, way back, the reason why that would be kind of a big deal is because he almost became Spider-Man before the Tobey Maguire era of Spider-Man movies. He would have been James Cameron's Spider-Man back in the 90s when he was trying to make a version of that movie. But all this big multiverse stuff is going to start during the WandaVision episodes. That's going to be January 15th for episode one. There are some actual prequel episodes, some bonus content that Marvel is releasing the week before that called Marvel Legends. So I'll do some episode videos for that too. That'll be January 8th. There is a bonus episode of The Mandalorian that's supposed to drop Christmas Day this week. Obviously, there's a bunch of other big stuff happening. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all those videos when I post them. But everyone click here for my full Star Wars Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 8 finale video and all my bonus videos. And click here to learn about what's going on with Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.